Good morning, Guardians. This Jobby Gamer here, and wow, it's already Friday. Just, just, it amazes me how fast the time flies. One moment it's Monday, the next moment it's Friday. I've noticed having deadlines tends to make time fly even faster. And wow, because I have deadlines every week, one moment it's Monday, the next it's Friday. In addition, it's already September. When did it become September? I just blown away. Anyway, as you can see, this is Destiny 1. Original Destiny, original tower, best tower. I think it's the best. Um, I love this tower. The view is always spectacular, even with the trap. That just looks phenomenal. That makes you wonder all of a sudden, how does the gravity pull affect things? Because, yeah, anyway, because I remember, anyway, just the usual reminder that Zer will be leaving the tower in about 48 hours. It is right now 6 a.m. in New Jersey. He arrives at 5 a.m. in New Jersey, and he leaves on Sunday at 5 a.m. in the morning. That is important. This is not Destiny 2. Destiny 2, I know Zer stays until reset. And reset in Destiny 2 is in the afternoon. Reset in original Destiny is in the morning. So just keep that in mind, because I still get messages every now from people saying, wait, I'm in the tower. Where is Zer? So, the way you know if Zer is in the tower is if you see this mark. Now, if he, you don't see this mark and it's Friday, Saturday, Friday or Saturday, it means he's in the reef. If you see this, if you don't see this mark and it's the rest of the week, it means he's gone. Anyway, it's not that hard. Um, we're heading towards the Vanguard with Cade Six. And, um, he's right over here. Now, I'm just going to show this off because this is insane. I am on my second Hunter, which I will continue to live stream. Though not, I'm not going to be live streaming all day anymore because I feel like my entire weekend, there's some things I actually need to do during the week, on my weekends. But I'm on my recently restarted level 9 Hunter. Okay, I started playing Original Destiny last week and I'm just replaying the whole thing. Great. Great, 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 great. Give it a second. I'm on my level 9 hunter, which what's awesome about it is... Um, okay, so we are heading towards the Vanguard. I'm on my level 9 hunter, which I restarted this weekend. And what's really cool about my level 9 hunter is there's a little secret. So first off, let me just show you what Zur is carrying, and then I will tell you more about my level 9 hunter, because it's pretty cool. So, Zur is carrying, he's over here by the vanguard, as we said, and he's got, all right, let's start with the guns. He's got Soros Regime and Basilisk's Glory. Now, I can't use my Soros Regime. Seriously? Soros Regime and Basilisk's Glory. Basilisk's Glory is my favorite ornament for Soros Regime. Just, I mean, come on, look at that. That is awesome. That is ridiculously awesome. I'm a huge fan of Soros Regime. So bo the bottom half of each magazine deals bonus damage and has a chance to return health on kill. What I love about Soros Regime, it is an auto rifle, but it has a decent impact. I love the feel of Soros Regime. For a very, very long time, I used Soros Regime because of that. And then I discovered, which I don't have it with me, Chaos Dogma, I think it's called. It's one of the raid weapons from Wrath of the Machine. So I stopped using Soros regime because while the health perk is nice like I was using this doing challenge of the elders and when I switched all of a sudden it was harder because I wasn't getting health on kills but so yeah but for me the primary thing I like about Soros regime is the rate of fire impact I mean that's important to me I do not like really really slow guns and I'm not a big fan of weapons that have almost no impact and a high rate of fire this has a high rate of fire and a decent impact I highly recommend Soros Regime. I remember running Crucible and people telling me, you're running Crucible with Soros Regime. Are you crazy? And it's like, no, because I like to use in Crucible weapons that I use outside of Crucible because you get used to it. And I was getting more kills with Soros Regime. So I was like, no, you should use this and this and this. I'm like, no, Soros Regime was my gun. Then I got uh, Chaos Dogma. And so it freed up an exotic spot. But there was a point where people would be like, so you have Gallahorn, right? Because we'd be doing Crota's End. And I'd be like, eh, because I did have Gallahorn, but I didn't want to stop using Soros Regime. So sweet weapon, sweet ornament. You need it. 
If you don't have it, you need it. Next, we have Dragon's Breath and Tiger Shark. And we have Dragon's Breath again. So I hate when they do that, when it's the same weapon twice. You, but you can get it either with the ornament or without the ornament. So the ornament is Tiger Shark. And again, I can't use it on this character because reasons. Because my character is level 9. Tiger Shark is the only ornament for Dragon's Breath. Um, it looks um, like this without it. I think it looks way better with Tiger Shark. But um, I don't know. I've never really used Dragon's Breath. Uh, release trigger after weapon fire to drop a solar damage napalm canister. Um, maybe I should use it more. But honestly, I have like this this raid weapon that has um, cluster bombs and tracking, and it's not Galahorn because I have Galahorn on this character. Um, surplus. Expect to find more ammo for this weapon. Increases carry ammo capacity. That's pretty sweet, though. That's good. Um, a kill with the final round in the magazine increases reload speed. That's good, too. Though, I'll admit, I love in Destiny 2 the evade that reloads. So, I think there's also a exotic for warlocks that when you pick up ammo, it re automatically reloads your weapon. That's nice. That's very nice because I, I hate guns that require a lot of reload. But yeah, this is a neat, decent combination. Maybe I'll use it when I play Destiny 1 again because I haven't used it that much. But, you know, one of the great things about doing these Zer videos is it reminds you about exotics that you haven't used in a while. So like, wait a minute, I haven't dra used Dragon's Breath in a while. Maybe I should. So yeah, you can either get it with or without the ornament, with the ornament, it's 30 strange coins, 25 silver dust. With it, it's, without the ornament, it's only 17. As you can see, I don't have anything because this is my level 9 character. Everything is on my level 40 character. I mean, I don't even have void unlocked yet. Okay, now let's look at the gear. So you've got the Crest of Alpha Loopy. Supers generate an extra orb. Revive and be revived faster. So, unless you're with a fire team, this is useless. Let me know, Titans, how you feel about this. Because honestly, I'm just meh about it. I mean, revive and be revived faster. Supers generate an extra orb. Supers, orbs are useless unless you're in a fire team. It's not like Destiny 2. So, let me know, Titans. Complain away, Titans. Number two, for the hunter, you have the... Acleophage symbiote. Golden gun gains an additional shot. This seems like it would be great for Crucible. So your golden gun would have four shots. So you can have four chances to one shot someone because golden gun will basically one shot people. So this seems more like, or you're going after, you have a whole bunch of yellow bar enemies. And yeah, this isn't that bad. I'm more of a Celestial Nighthawk person because I use Celestial Nighthawk against bosses. But this I could see having an advantage. Also, it's not too bulky. It passes the Corpus Helmet test. As I've said, the Corpus Helmet test is if your helmet is bulkier than a Corpus Helmet, um, then uh, it's too bulky. Corpus Helmet is the edge of bulkiness, though... In actuality, it probably should be bulkier than it is because when you put a non-helmeted corpus next to a helmeted one, you can tell it just doesn't work. But corpus helmet is the max, and this is okay. It looks okay. Um, I mean, no, this seems like a decent one. It looks a little creepy. But yeah, this one, this one, thumbs up for me. Then we've got for the warlock, the apotheosis veil, which I know means um, become god. God with the lower G. Immediate health, melee, and grenade regeneration on activating your super. Yeah, I can see why it's called apotheosis. So your health, your melee, and your grenade all regenerate on activating your super. I like that. Let me know, Warlocks. I like it, though. It's not too bulky. It looks pretty cool. I mean, that I love that. It looks pretty cool. It's not too bulky. It looks like it could actually work. Um, you know, I, I like it. This one I like. This one I absolutely 100% like. So I fully support it. And then you have the usual other curios, which I picked one of these up and I, during my live stream last week, playing Original Destiny, and it was underwhelming. Slight increases on stats, but a very underwhelming uh, sparrow. 
Um, anyway, I was going to show one other thing off. So my hunter, as you can see, is level 9, light 44. And my light, nine, light, nine, level 9 hunter can be equipped with a 400 light iron galahorn. I've mentioned this before. Now you can see it for yourselves. Check it out. My iron galahorn is on my level 9 hunter. How? So as you can see, there is no level limit for this. So look at, like, for example, Cirrus Regime. Cirrus Regime requires level 40. Not all weapons require level 40. There are some exotics that actually require a lower level. But most of them require level 40. However, my Iron Galahorn does not have a level limit. This is because it was the pre-order bonus from Rise of Iron. Now, I did a dumb mistake on my PlayStation account. I dismantled my Iron Galahorn. And then I reclaimed it. Now, if you do not reclaim, do that... There's a no level limit. On the other hand, if you reclaim Iron Galahorn, see right over here, requires level 40. So the initial Iron Galahorn you get when you buy Rise of Iron has no level limit. However, if you dismantle it and you reclaim it from the kiosk, because every, every time you get an exotic weapon, it immediately unlocks the blueprint for you. So... Once you get it, that's it. You have it permanently. You dismantle it. You could come back and you can pick it up again. You have the blueprint. So once you get Iron Galahorn, the blueprint for Iron Galahorn is unlocked for you. However, if you dismantle it, you lose that lack of a level lock. So as you can see, my level 9 Hunter has a level 400, a light 400. Now, it has some disadvantages because there is a light kind of level locking with your light level. So... Certain levels you are expected to not be above a certain light level. So oftentimes when I go to the Crypt Arc with this character to um, decrypt engrams, the engrams I get, I can't immediately use. The gear I get, I can't use. This is because the light, my light level is so high at level 9. And when you decrypt an engram, it's based on your light level. However, there is a lock, like I said, and certain light levels are, are locked. You can't, can't get gear for certain light levels at certain levels, but because I'm breaking the system, I mean, when you saw it, I went from like light 44 to light, when I put, see, light 90, I went from light, this is a weapon I can use. I went from 44 to 90. So when I decrypt stuff, you can see right over here. Requires level 12. Requires level 12 because it's light 87. So they expect you to be at level 12 when you're at light 87. So that's the problem. 86 requires level 12. So that's why it, there's, that's the disadvantage. So sometimes what I'll do is I will equip a different heavy when I go to decrypt with the Cryptarch. Because at one point, Everything was unusable. I had to wait. So it was like I wasn't going up. See, like, it requires level 12. But on the other hand, there's nothing cooler than... I, this, I started this... I picked this up from my vault at level 2. I could have picked it up even sooner. But I was doing a live stream, so I wanted to show how it could be done. And there was another trick I wanted to show them with heavy weapons. But you can, if you have Iron Galahorn light level 400... You could pick it up level one the moment you get to the tower. So, yeah. Anyway, the other thing, just random thought, is I read a book a while back called The Day After Tomorrow, which dealt with the moon getting closer to the Earth. So it makes you wonder, what are the... I mean, maybe it's because it's the Traveler. So the Traveler's making sure not to affect the gravity. But you have that the two of them so close together that it would definitely be affecting the tides and volcanic activity and all of that if it were I mean just thinking about the book where it was like volcanoes and storms kind of messed things up so it makes you wonder anyway thank you for watching like comment subscribe I will probably be playing original destiny tomorrow and final fantasy 14 on Sunday I'll see
but not all day because, well, it, it, I've been spending way too much time and there's a lot of other things I need to do. But let me know down in the comments. As I said, I also want to start raid teams um, for Original Destiny. I'll probably be live streaming tonight as well, but I'll see. Peace. See you in the tower.